literally everybody was cheating on everybody and it made for a very drama-filled, messy ride. sweet angels it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my September wrap-up for 2024 I read a total of 15 books if you are interested in the first seven that video is up on my channel now and this is the final eight books that I read for the month so without further ado let us get started the first book I'm going to talk about is X's and Foes this is by Amanda Woody and I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars this follows two ex-best friends named Emma and Caleb they decide to make dating the new girl Juliet into a competition the first person who gets Juliet to kiss them is allowed to date her but when Juliet only seems to be interested in hanging out with them together, things get a little bit more complicated. I really liked the author's first book, They Hate Each Other, so I was very excited to pick up another one of their books. Turns out I really liked this one as well. I think that the dynamics between the characters were so much fun. Emma, Caleb, and Juliet are all characters that you can't help but fall in love with. All three of them go through so much growth by the end of the book. All three of them battle with self-doubt and think that they're not good enough and all three of them go through a journey of self-discovery as they learn more about themselves as they hang out with one another. I like how we got point of views from both Emma and Caleb. It really helped us see inside both of their minds and see how they are actually feeling towards one another. I love me some mutual pining so I was totally into this. My favorite arc was probably Caleb's. It made me so happy to see him grow more confident in himself and it made me so sad to see how he had no idea why Emma had stopped talking to him and truly felt that it was something that he had done. I'm not gonna lie, I was rooting so hard for him and Emma to be together. As much as I liked Juliet, it was just so obvious that Emma and Caleb were each other's people. I like how we got to see the backstory of how Emma and Caleb's relationship fell apart and I do like how we got to see it be mended as well. Emma's arc regarding her mother and sister really broke my heart but I really enjoyed how it was resolved in the end. I also thought that the rep was really well done. We got bisexual, demisexual, and asexual rep all in one and we also got some great mental health rep as well. I think that Amanda Woody definitely has the potential to become an autobi author for me and I cannot wait to see what they come out with next. I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Next book that I have is The Ghost of Us. It is by James L. Sutter and I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows 18 year old ghost hunter Kara who has made it her life mission to prove that the supernatural exists while she was filming a video for her YouTube channel. She stumbles across the spirit of Aiden who was an upper class man at her high school who died tragically a year ago. He agrees to helping her prove that ghosts are real if she helps him pass over into the afterlife. They believe that the only way that Aiden will be able to move on from this life is to help his sister Meredith move on from his death. I was drawn to this book because of the cover. I think it is so beautiful. The concept of this book was really fun. I loved the friendship that blossomed between Kara and Aiden. The writing style was very easy to read and I flew through it quite quickly. I will say that although I didn't necessarily agree with the reasoning behind Meredith and Kara's relationship, I do think that they were very sweet together. I thought they were very cute together and they did have some nice moments, but I totally understand Understand the anger that Meredith felt when she found out the reasoning behind the start of it. I wish that we had gotten a point of view from Meredith or even one from Aiden. I think that that would have heightened the story for me and probably would have made it a 4.5 or a 5 star read for me but overall I did really like this. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Next up I read The Temptation of Magic by Megan Scott and this one I gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This one follows Nicole Palmer. She is a imperial which is a type of shape-shifting creature who lives among the humans but is hunted by the wake which is an organization that governs all supernatural beings. After the death of her mother Nicole is searching for an encoded message that she left behind in a supernatural art collection. In the search for this art collection she finds herself in the midst of Kyan McCarter who is a wake assassin on the hunt and it's kind of the story of her trying to evade him but also work with him and find this art collection. It was 
so stinking good. I was so intrigued by this concept. I thought it sounded so much fun and I was not wrong. I was pleasantly surprised by this. I think that the world building was amazing. I loved the use of art in this and I loved learning the backstory of all the supernatural creatures that were in this world. The character dynamics was also super fun. I really loved both Nicole and Cayenne and I liked how we got the point of views from both of them. I think that it really helped see inside both of their heads. I really liked Nicole. I thought she was so fiercely loyal to her family who I absolutely loved by the way. I'm a sucker for the forbidden love trope. I'm a big fan of the forbidden love trope and I think that Nicole and Cayenne were complete opposites but they had really great chemistry together. Throw in one-sided enemies to lovers and I am a goner. I liked how they had to learn to trust one another and then they became so protective of each other. Cayenne is probably one of my new favorite characters. His backstory is absolutely heartbreaking but everything he went through makes me like him so much more. It does drag a little bit in the middle, which is why I dropped half a star. This is apparently the author's debut novel, which it does not feel like at all. I cannot wait to see what happens next in this series. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Next, I read The Pairing by Casey McQuiston, and I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Theo and Kit, who are exes. They have not spoken or seen each other in four years after a very messy breakup in an airport. They accidentally book the same European food and wine tasting trip, and along the way, they decide that they are going to have a hookup competition to prove to one another that they are over each other. I like how the first part of this book was from Theo's perspective and then it switches into Kit's perspective in the second half. I think that that was a great way to see what these characters were actually feeling about one another. I think that they both went through a lot of character development as the story progressed and I really enjoyed watching them reconnect with each other. I do think that the reasoning behind their breakup was a little bit weak once it is revealed. I do think that literally all of their issues could have been resolved if they had had one conversation in the four years that they spent apart. Heart. I also think that the hookup competition got very repetitive pretty quickly, but I did really like the European setting and all of the foods that they got to try. The descriptions of those made my mouth water and I am definitely jealous that I didn't get to have a taste. It's definitely not my favorite Casey McQuiston book, but it was enjoyable nonetheless. I give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next I read Prince of the Palisades by Julian Winters and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows Jaden, who is the prince of a small island in Africa. He is sent to America to clean up his image after a video of him badmouthing the Prime Minister goes viral. In order to return home, he has to prove to his parents that he is ready to be the prince that his people wants. When he's in America, he is enrolled into a private school and that is where he meets Reese, who is a pink-haired movie buff who just might be exactly what this prince needs. This was a really cute and fun read. I think that Jaden went through a lot of character development by the end of the book and I really liked watching him learn what it was that he actually wanted. I liked that the romance blossomed but Jaden also had a lot of friendships develop throughout the story as well. I thought that Jaden and Reese were very cute together and I do think that they were good for each other. I really liked how Reese was not afraid to put Jaden in his place even if he was a prince. If he stepped out of line, Reese was going to let him know. These side characters were also a huge hit for me. I absolutely loved the future queen to be Annika. I really, really want a companion novel to this following Annika and her love interest. I think it would be so much fun, but I really enjoyed this story. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Next up, I have Attached at the Hip by Christine Riccio. I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows Ori Lennox. She is an influencer on Instagram with her sister. She is one part of the duo of a acro yoga group. She has a fight with her sister who says that she is very codependent and so she decides to go out on a whim and audition for Survivor. Next thing she knows that she's getting a call from the producers to let her know that she has been cast in this show so she flies off to do her intro clip where she learns that she's actually not going to be on Survivor. She's going to be on a spin-off show called Attached at the Hip. 
Along the way, she makes a few connections, all while trying to compete for a $1 million cash prize. This is probably my favorite of Christine's books. A lot of people complain about Ori and the way that she is written on page. The way she speaks is apparently very jarring when you read it. I personally read this on audiobook, so I didn't have that same experience. I thought this was a lot of fun. I flew through it in a few hours because I was so invested in the story. I did enjoy the characters for the most part. The characters were all just silly little gooses and if that's not your thing you probably won't like this but I found them pretty endearing. Ori was a great character in my opinion. She goes through a lot of character development and I really liked that she was still trying to figure out what she wanted to do with her life after college. I think that a lot of people will find that very relatable. I will say that she is supposed to be 20 something and at times she is very immature and doesn't really feel like she's 20 something something years old. And she can be quite annoying at times, especially with her insistence on being called Piccadilly. That was just weird to me, and her constant pop culture references got a little boring after a while. Osprey was my favorite character. I think that he is such a sweet little cinnamon roll who tries to be tough but is just a sweet angel, and I think that everybody needs to protect him at all costs. I also really enjoyed Kennedy's character. I thought she was a great addition to the story. I also really enjoyed the competition aspect. We actually get to see the tasks and things that the competitors are doing during their time on the show, which I thought was a lot of fun. I liked this, but I definitely recommend that you listen to it on audiobook so you don't get that jarring capital letters and a thousand explanation points that people are talking about. I gave it a four out of five stars. Next up, I have One House Left by Vincent Ralph. I gave this one a 3.5 out of five stars. This follows 16 year old Nate Campbell who lives on a cursed street called Murder Road. After a recent death on the street, his family is running away from a vengeful spirit called the Hiding Boy. When Nate arrives at his new school, he is reluctantly pulled into a trio of friends who are urban legend hunters. This was an okay spooky read. I do think that the ending is what saved it for me. It has a twist that I did not see coming, which is why I bumped my rating up half a star. The rest of the story was quite repetitive. The chapters are very short, which made it to be a quick read, but I also had to put the book down for several days because I just wasn't invested in the story. Once I reached the 75% mark, I became more invested in the story and wanted to know what was going to happen, but overall, it was okay. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The final book that I'm going to talk about is Girls Who Burn by M.K. Pangano, and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It follows Addie, who got into a fight with her sister a year ago. They left each other after saying some pretty hurtful words to one another, and Addie has always regretted this fight because that night, her sister Fiona was found dead at the bottom of the ravine. The police deemed it an accident, but Addie has always been adamant that somebody killed her. Addie believes that this person is Thatcher Montgomery because she witnessed her sister and Thatcher fighting that night. One year later, Thatcher is found in the same spot where Fiona was found. This causes Addie to team up with Thatcher's cousin Seth to try to figure out what happened to their family members and who was behind both of their deaths. This was a very fast read with very interesting dynamics between the characters. Literally everybody was cheating on everybody and it made for a very drama-filled, messy ride. It was fun trying to figure out who murdered Thatcher and Fiona. I had my suspicions on who I thought the killer was and they definitely went on their long killer monologue in the end, but I still enjoyed my time reading. I don't think it'll be anything that I'll pick up again, but I did have fun while I was reading it, so I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, so those were the last 8 books that I read for the month of September 2024. If you are interested in the first 7 books that I read, then that video is up on my channel now and you can check it out. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye! Bye!